Hi everyone, my name is Mark Strickland. I am a DSLR and travel specialist here at Blue Water Photo, and I've been shooting underwater photos for many, many years. Today I'd like to share with you some insights on a very important topic, O-ring maintenance. First of all, before we get into it, let's talk for a moment about our working environment. Uh, with O-rings, it is essential that they remain completely clean and free of any contaminants, so uh, it makes sense to start out with a clean working environment. Even a grain of sand or salt is not a good thing for O-rings, but what is possibly the most dangerous uh, and likely to cause problems is any sort of a fiber or hair. So for you pet owners out there, uh, choose an area that is uh, completely free of any kind of pet hairs or other fibers that might get mixed up in your O-rings. Also, in terms of a working environment, it's very important to have good lighting. So uh, I find that the best is, uh, if possible, is just natural lighting outdoors under the sun. But otherwise, if you're indoors, diffuse lighting, like typical fluorescent lights uh, seem to work very well. Uh, but I would avoid a very directional sort of spot lighting. And uh, worst case scenario, you don't want to find yourself servicing O-rings after a, a long international flight and you're all bleary eyed and jet lagged and working under a, a 10 watt light bulb somewhere in a bungalow. So pick and choose your moments for, uh, for servicing your O-rings. Uh, in terms of tools and materials, there's very little that's needed. Uh, basically, everything needed should be included with your, with your camera kit uh, that you put together for travel, uh, including an appropriate uh, brand of O-ring grease, and this should match whatever equipment uh, the O-ring belongs to. That's very important. Uh, an optional but uh, uh, could be important item is an O-ring removal tool. We never want to use anything sharp to remove an O-ring, so no sharp metal tools. However, uh, something uh, flexible and plastic like a credit card or a guitar pick, or uh, there are certain manufacturers like Nauticam and CNC make actual O-ring removal tools. Uh, also, for cleaning not only the O-ring itself, but the groove that it sits in, uh, a microfiber cloth, some kind of a lint-free cloth, and or Something that works really well is a makeup applicator swab so you can get it at most pharmacies or variety stores. So the first step in servicing any O-ring is to remove it from the equipment that it's used in. In this case, uh, we're gonna demonstrate on the battery compartment cap from this uh, CNC strobe. Um, there are several methods you can use to remove the O-ring. My preferred method is simply by squeezing the O-ring from either side and pushing it forward until you can push a bit of slack or a gap in the O-ring, and then lift it off with your fingers. Very easy. However, uh, it's uh, equally valid to use an O-ring removal tool, in which case we just, uh, again, using uh, a not sharp, uh, preferably tool designed specifically for this, just slide one edge of the tool under the O-ring and gently lift it off. Now, because uh, O-rings generally do have uh, silicone grease on them, they will tend to pick up any contaminants if they are uh, resting on a, a surface or anything. So it's very important not to ever set the O-ring down on any surface where it could pick up uh, contaminants like hair or uh, other, uh, other contaminants. So rather than set it down, I just rest it on my finger. With a larger O-ring, just loop it over your wrist. I'll demonstrate that with a, a bigger O-ring here as well. In this case, the main seal for a housing. Once again, we could use the O-ring removal tool, scooching it down between the O-ring and the groove that it sits in, or once again by just kind of pushing from either side, create enough slack that you can lift it up and just loop it on your wrist. So now that our O-rings are safely set aside where they're not going to pick up any contaminants, the next thing to concern ourselves with is inspecting and cleaning the groove or sealing surface that the O-ring sits in on the equipment. Now to do this, we want to have a few materials handy. Either a lint-free cloth, micro microfiber cloth works very well, and or these little um, makeup applicator swabs. The idea is to get down into the groove where the O-ring sits and remove any old grease and any contaminants that that may have attracted. So by way of using the, uh, the little makeup swab, just stuff that down right into the groove. It's just about the ideal size for most O-ring grooves and slowly scooch that around inside the groove to remove any contaminants and then carefully inspect it. Make sure that you don't see any hairs or particles or grains of sand or salt there. Uh, same thing uh, if we are using a microfiber cloth or any kind of lint-free cloth. 
The idea is to first of all fold the cloth several times until it is roughly the same diameter as the o-ring that you're dealing with. Uh, in this case, it's about right here. We're just going to stuff the corner of this microfiber cloth into the groove or the o-ring seat and while applying a bit of pressure, push that around all the way around the circumference of the groove to once again remove any contaminants that are sitting there. Same exact technique with a larger o-ring sealing surface like that of the housing. Do pay particular attention, however, to any kind of tight places, nooks and crannies, uh, corners and so forth. In particular with this kind of housing that it does have hinges on the back door, pay special attention to the inside surface here where it might otherwise be hard to get to. And then once we have cleaned it, again the key is to thoroughly inspect it under good lighting. Make sure you haven't missed anything. Again, we're looking to remove any sort of hair or fiber or particles that are in that groove. It's also equally important to pay attention to the opposite ceiling surface, in this case the one on the inside of the housing. On this one, since it's really not hard to get to like that o-ring groove, it's not necessary to uh, use the microfiber cloth or the swab, but just using your clean finger, run your finger around the inside ceiling surface and make sure that you don't feel or see any contaminants. Same thing with the strobe here. Again, this uh, whole process is as much tactile as it is visual, so we are looking and feeling for any contaminants. Once again, carefully inspect that after uh, cleaning it and make sure that you didn't miss anything. Only once you are satisfied that the o-rings themselves and the grooves are completely clean do we apply any lubricant. But before we get to the lubricant, let's move on to the o-rings themselves. To clean the o-rings, if, if you happen to have a really dirty and disgusting o-ring, um, hot soapy water is probably a good idea. But in general, if you've been doing a good job keeping up with your o-ring maintenance, that should not be necessary. Normally, all that's required for cleaning the o-ring is just pulling it gently between thumb and forefinger, round and round and round a few times and then rotate round and round so that you have contacted all the sealing surfaces of the o-ring. Same thing with a larger o-ring, like this one for the main seal. Again, pulling it gently between thumb and forefinger, round and round a few times. With the larger o-rings, it is uh, especially possible that they might get overstretched. So be careful in this process and work gently. We don't want to overstretch the o-ring, just pulling it between thumb and forefinger so that you can remove any contaminants that have landed there, and also you can feel them uh, for any that might be remaining. You want to repeat this process several times, and again carefully inspect it to make sure that we have indeed removed any contaminants, even pesky little particles like that one. And again, uh, we don't want to apply any grease until we're confident that the o-ring is completely clean. For the next step, now that these o-rings are clean, we are going to apply a small amount of o-ring grease. Again, it's very important that we use the brand of grease that corresponds with the brand of equipment. So for this bright blue o-ring, this is a CNC o-ring, we're going to utilize the CNC o-ring grease. Again, using it sparingly for a small o-ring like this, uh, no more than about a kernel of corn's worth of grease, maybe even a bit less. You don't want to apply it necessarily directly to the o-ring, but rather to your forefinger. Squeeze out a little bit there, about like so. And then the idea is to distribute that evenly on the o-ring. So just smear it around between thumb and forefinger a bit to spread it out a bit. And then gently pull the o-ring between thumb and forefinger in the same way that you did when you were cleaning it. Round and round and round a few times. Rotate your thumb and forefinger 90 degrees as you go round and round again so that you have contacted all the sealing surfaces of the o-ring. And the result should be just a very thin, shiny layer of silicone grease. You don't want any big globs of it anywhere, but you also don't want any areas to be dry. Just a thin, even application. And at that point, and we've already inspected the groove that it sits in to make sure that that is clean as well, we can replace that o-ring in the sealing surface. With the, uh, the Nauticam o-ring, slightly different procedure just because the Nauticam grease is a different consistency than the CNC. In this case, the, the grease is kind of two parts. There's a white pasty component and a thin watery component. So I recommend shaking the tube vigorously before applying any to try to mix those up a bit. Then squeeze out a little blob on your forefinger like so. Again, about the same amount as a kernel of corn. Rub that between thumb and forefinger a little bit to get it distributed. 
and then once again pull gently between thumb and forefinger round and round and round as you're pulling the o-ring through your fingers then rotate your thumb and forefinger 90 degrees round and round and round again a few times to evenly distribute that grease so once again no big globs just a nice sheeny appearance to it and inspecting very closely to make sure there's no pesky hairs or particles or fibers remaining and replace that o-ring in the groove. Voila! So one question that always seems to come up uh, in regards to o-ring servicing is how often should I do it? And that's uh, kind of a loaded question because there seem to be many different opinions about that out there. But I would say uh, if in doubt, service your O-rings. Much better to uh, service them when it's not needed than to neglect it when it is needed. Uh, but it depends a lot on your diving situation. Uh, if you come up from a dive and uh, you've not been uh, anywhere near silty areas and when you uh, open your housing or whatever component it is and you don't observe any sand or grit or contaminants on the o-ring then it's probably just fine if it didn't flood on the last dive it probably won't flood on the next dive either uh, in fact if the o-ring is not already contaminated how might it get contaminated probably by messing with it so I, I think there's something to be said for leaving well enough alone however anytime if you come up from a dive and you do notice sand or grit or any sort of contaminants on the o-ring then certainly that is a clue that uh, it should be serviced uh, for sure, service your O-rings at the beginning of any big dive trip. There are people who service their O-rings every day, whether they need it or not. Uh, I'm not sure that that's really helpful, but if it makes you feel better, as long as you're doing it carefully, go right ahead. Uh, however, if, uh, if you're in doubt as to whether you have good lighting uh, or a, 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 an adequate or appropriate place to work on O-rings, many times better just to leave well enough alone rather than to service them in a less than ideal situation. Uh, at the very least, service them once per trip and more often as needed according to the circumstances uh, that I just mentioned. Aside from that, uh, I think this pretty well covers O-ring maintenance, but please, if you do have any questions, always feel free to contact us here at Blue Water, either by email or by phone. We're open every day except Sunday, and we look forward to hearing from you. So thanks again for joining us.